Gotham episode two entitled Selena Kyle. I just got done watching this episode and first overall I want to say my initial feeling about the episode was I thought it was okay. There were things about it that I liked a lot and then there were some other things that I didn't really care for. I will say I, I didn't like it as much as the pilot but Let's get right into it, because the episode starts with, we see Bruce Wayne, and he's hovering his hand over a fire. He's burning his hand, and Alfred catches him and gets pissed off, and I don't really like Bruce Wayne <laughs> right now, and I can't really explain why, I mean, I guess it's just, I don't know, maybe I could almost do without seeing him this much. Like, I like the scene at the end of the episode where he's talking to Gordon and he wants to help the kids, wants to give them money, but he ends up just giving them clothes. Like, that I like, but I don't really like him standing on the roof of the mansion or trying to burn his hand to, I guess, test himself or get over his fears. Like, I just, I don't think we're at that point we're Bruce yet. I don't think we've taken enough time to really get to know him or to really just have him deal with the situation enough to where he's already becoming that hardened pre-Batman character. I, I don't know. I think he's too young to be acting like this. Alfred, I want to say that I like the fact that he's kind of a hard ass and that he's his initial thing was to yell at Bruce and then he hugged him because he almost realized the way he was reacting. I like the fact that Alfred is struggling to deal with this, that he's never had a son. He doesn't know exactly how to raise Bruce. I like the fact that he's not right out the bat the nice, warm, and caring Alfred that we all know. Sure, it's a little jarring to see Alfred like this because you're used to the other way around, but I think this could play for a nice progression of the two of them developing more of a close relationship. So that's a change I don't mind. The plot of the episode was pretty much these this group going around and kidnapping homeless kids. And it wasn't that major of a plot as far as... Like, I was expecting to get more of the, the Wayne murderer. Maybe more stuff about that. But I guess we are going to have a little bit of an episodic, different plots for every episode going on. And they'll mention the Wayne stuff as they go on, but still I thought it was interesting. It made sense, I guess, that they would go after homeless kids because with the way the police department is, even the mayor doesn't really give that much of a shit about what happens to certain people. It's like, yeah, I could see them getting away with doing this. The part I thought was a little over the top was when they were going after the one kid. And it's like they waited and let him run off. And then when they went after him, the guy threw the kid into the window. Now, sure, the cops and I guess the people in there thought that he was just some junkie kid who was crazy and just babbling on. But still, that was really sloppy of them to do that and to pretty much just leave a witness out there like that to talk to the cops, especially Gordon. Now, speaking of Gordon, I like seeing him and Bullock fight. Some people might think it's a little too much, like they're, they're going at it almost just tooth and nail, completely not agreeing on almost anything. But I like that because, well, personally, I've always known Gordon and Bullock's relationship as always disagreeing more so when it pertains to Batman, but still, I like the fact that they're going to have this relationship where they do argue, they do disagree, they don't hardly see eye to eye when it comes to how to approach these cases, but there's other points where, like, Bullock tries to help Gordon out, mostly talking about Barbara, his fiance, and he's trying to give him advice on how to take care of his woman and all that. Barbara, though, I didn't like the way she just took the information that Gordon gave her about the case he's working on, and she just goes and calls the press. And she went on on this whole thing about how this is the right thing to do, how can you go against me right now for doing this, I did the right thing. I think if Gordon comes to her 
and tells her about a case she's working on. She can't just go off and call the press. Like, that just, that blew my mind that she just up and did that. And it was just like, oh, I guess Gordon's the asshole for yelling at her about it. Arkham Asylum was referenced a lot in this episode. And after about the third or fourth time, I thought, okay, you guys are name dropping Arkham Asylum a lot. But I did like the moment where one of the guys said that it's been closed for 10, 15 years and the Wayne family wanted to reopen it. But I like that. I like how the Waynes were at least trying to reopen it. And I like the fact that maybe they were all for Arkham Asylum. So it's just that connection I liked. Carmine Falcone, or as this show likes to call him, Falcone? Why? I don't like that. I don't like the fact that they changed his name to Falcone, or they're pronouncing his name as Falcone. This might sound like how I reviewed the pilot episode and I complained about little certain things that they've changed, namely like Ivy Pepper, for example, but Carmine Falcone, I've just, I've always known that to be his name as long as I've known the character. And I know it's a little thing, it's a little tiny nitpick, but still, every time I hear it, I just kind of close my eyes, get a little annoyed. Fish Mooney, I still like her, like I said in the first episode. I like Jada Pinkett. I especially like the moment where she sort of revealed that her goal, her dream, is to kill Carmine and she wants to take over the business. I, I figured that, but just to see how passionate she was about wanting to do that and how she wants to do it with her bare hands, I thought was pretty creepy. However, every other time I see her though, she is a little over the top, a little bit too dramatic. It kind of works with her character, but then in contrast to the way everyone else is acting, like Gordon and whatnot, it's, it's sort of out of place. Tonally, I don't know how much it works. Let's talk about Edward Nigma, because I kind of liked him in the first episode. It was a quick moment where he was just giving riddles and whatnot. This scene, though, yeah, he was a little creepy, but I think they're playing him as the Jim Carrey Riddler, or Edward Nigma. He's very goofy, he's very awkward and silly, and I feel like I've already seen that. And Jim Carrey played that, and you're not going to be able to recreate that magic. So I was hoping to get a more serious, more creepy Edward Nigma, a guy who, he could still work at the precinct, he could still be the forensics guy, but I just, a more serious guy who maybe is just a loner and gets more angry over time, over the course of the show, I thought would have worked better, but I guess that's not what we're going to get. The Penguin, though, I think is one of the best things about the show, besides Gordon. I like what they're doing with the Penguin. I like what happened to him in the first episode, and now he's off on his own, how he killed the kids in the car, he bought this trailer, and he tried to bribe the mother of one of the kids uh, for like $10,000. I like the fact that that didn't work, and he's just, he's so unpredictable. I don't really know what he's going to do next. So that's why I like him. I like seeing how he started off here. And just by the second episode, he's already grown and evolved to this crazy, unpredictable killer. Another thing that I liked about this episode a lot, actually, was Selena Kyle herself. I don't really know why the episode was named that, because I get that it was mostly about her. But we never, she never said her name. So I don't really know why it's named Selena Kyle. She calls herself Cat, which, again, a little too much with the referencing, but I get it. Okay, fine, she has a nickname. I just like the fact how at the beginning she wasn't talking, and I thought they were going to stick with that. And even with her not talking, she still was interesting because it kind of showed how much she didn't trust people. And there's something about her eyes. Like, she looks like a young Selena Kyle. She looks like a young Michelle Pfeiffer. I think it's great casting with this girl. I liked how she outsmarted the kidnappers and how she escapes and how she raked the eyes out of one of the guys. That was pretty disturbing. And I really enjoyed the moment at the end where she threatened to scream rape at the guy. 
if she didn't get to talk to Gordon. And when she talked to Gordon, she's using the information of who killed the Waynes to get out of the trouble that she's in. I like that. It shows that she's smart, she's capable. They, get, they touched a little bit on the backstory of her mom and that she's dead, but she's either in denial about it or doesn't want to admit it. And I think it's even more funny because she's saying that she saw who the killer was clear as day. She's kind of lying, though, because I'm pretty sure the guy was wearing a mask. So we don't know who killed Wayne's parents, but she could be just using this as leverage as to pretend like she has information. So I have my complaints about the show, clearly. It's not perfect. It's far from perfect. But again, I think the good so far outweighs the bad. Of course, I'm sticking with it. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below if you saw episode two. What did you think of it? Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Later!